Today I am going to present overlay practical mobile augmented reality. Uh, my name is Puneet Chien uh, and uh, this is a joint work between my long term collaborator Justin Van Weiler from RN Research and my advisor Professor Ramit Raj Chaudhary. So mobile augmented reality refers to one's ability to look at the surrounding from our camera and see information about our surrounding uh, popping up on the screen. So this information, right now I'm showing as a text annotations, it could be something else, it could be web URLs, it could be videos or images. This, pro this part of augmented reality is not new. Many researchers, scientific writers have talked about it and, and if it is utilized, it can enable many new applications. Unfortunately, such kind of vision have never been real, uh, uh, realized into a holistic system. Let me show you a video uh, which, which gives a more overview of that how overlay works. So, so here the user is trying to uh, annotate an object. So let's say the user tries to annotate a clock. And uh, let's say user says that this clock seems to be running slow. Somebody needs to change the batteries. So overlay takes one picture of this, this uh, object and this is stored in the database. Now we did this for in, in our building, we did uh, close to 100 objects uh, across our floor. And now another user comes back and wants to look at these objects from different angles and continues to retrieve. Here I'm trying to show you that what is, or how does the environment looks like. So it's uh, uh, not kind of catered to special uh, kind of objects. And now I'm going to show you the what is the first person view of uh, uh, overlay is. And please make a note that when user looks at the object, how long does it take for actual annotation to pop up on the screen? And that is what this, this talk is all about, that how can we improve the latency? So here user looks at this. Uh, let's say he looks at this miniature objects and how long does it take to pop up? So here the user is looking from uh, books from a certain angle and the user is going to come back and look at it from a different angle and we should be able to retrieve it. So, so an obvious question is this, why this problem is, is not solved yet. And to answer that, we need to understand that how people have been attempting this problem. So this problem has been attempted mostly in two ways. There is a vision way of doing augmented reality and there is a mobile sensing way of doing augmented reality. There is some work in fusion also. Both of these approaches are necessary. We need vision, we need sensing, but it seems that none of that is proving sufficient to solve this problem. So let's look at the computer vision way of doing things. So it's very simple if we talk about uh, uh, augmented reality computer vision, that what we have on the screen, we need to extract features out of it. So we have a current frame on the screen, we extract features out of it. And here I'm showing you the latency of various computer vision algorithms on x-axis. Uh, on x-axis I'm showing algorithms, and by x-axis I'm showing, uh, showing uh, what are the latencies. And uh, another thing I'm here showing is, is that what happens when we add more and more objects to the database. So as we are adding more and more objects to the database, our match latency is increasing. So the problem with vision-based approach is that it actually solves the problem, just that it's slow. So one way to accelerate this entire process is to look at offloading and plus GPUs higher computers. Right? So we did that and what we saw is that we were getting close to 302 milliseconds of network latency to upload one high definition frame. On feature extraction we were getting close to 29 milliseconds on surf for surf features and for 100 image database we were getting close to 1 seconds of uh, matching latency. So we were not operating in kind of sub second and the, the experience was still delayed. So we tried to attack this problem that, that can we fix this matching latency component, which seems to be the primary uh, bottleneck. So another way of thinking this problem is to do mobile sensing. So if you talk about mobile sensing, what do we need are the three building blocks to do mobile sensing is that, that you need to know where phone is, you need to know where phone is pointed, and you also need to know that what are the object is in the view or not. So if we have these three information, we can actually do mobile augmented reality, at least for the outdoor cases. 
These requirements for outdoor cases are easily satisfied with GPS and compass. An object location can come if you have the known object on the maps, so we can get the object location also. The problem is that, that this does not work indoor. In indoor, we need to, uh, achieving these three uh, requirements is very hard. So there's clear trend, right? The computer vision is fast, it is, uh, it is slow, it's accurate, but there is mobile sensing wave which is, which is quick, which is inaccurate. And what, if we put indoor location on top of this, what we can do is that indoor location that can accelerate the computer vision process. If we have indoor location information available, then we can shortlist our database nearby for nearby objects and we can just perform matching to those, those objects. But for mobile sensing wave, we definitely need indoor location. Unfortunately, indoor localization is not ubiquitously available. And we wanted to decouple this problem that requirement for augmented reality should, uh, the augmented reality should not rely on indoor location. We wanted to decouple these two. So how can we solve indoor mobile augmented reality problem without using indoor location? And that is where we are proposing a location-free augmented reality. We are in Florence and we all go to museums. So here, let's say that this is an example museum case. And the user enters into a museum and in browsing these exhibits. User looks at exhibit A and follows through B, goes to C and follow, uh, eventually goes to D. Now, if we see that, that how user is walking, clearly what we can infer from this is that how long does a user take to walk around the objects? So user walks from A to B, let's say user takes seven seconds here. After watching B, user makes a rotation of close to 80 degrees and follows to C. And this information of the separation of various objects, we can capture on cloud precisely. So we will use mobile sensors to get the separations. And now what I'm showing you is that, that we do not understand that how does the layout look like. But over the time, we can build this understanding. We can come up with a geometric representation of our environment. And we will use this geometric representation, which is built from the usage of normal, volume, normal users to reduce our surface space and eventually enable mobile augmented. So, so let me expand on the notion that what the primary challenge in mobile augmented reality we faced was that how can we cut matching latency. And the way to cut matching latency is two ways, a temporal relationship and, and, a, and a rotational relationship. So how does temporal relationship and rotational relationship actually translate into reducing the database size? So here I'm showing you an example case. Then let's say you have a hallway and you have five objects there. Users enters into this hallway, looks at uh, various objects, and eventually this is the trajectory of the user is. If we look at these points, what these points are, the, the points where the user actually saw annotation being popped up on the screen. If we put some values on top of this, let's say that user enters into this hallway at t equals to zero. The time is sub b is seven, and 15, and, and 21, and so forth. If we talk about any two pair of objects here, let's talk about a and b. What we are saying here is that the user took, let's say that the time a typical user took to walk from A to B is TAB. And currently this user took seven seconds to walk, but because different users will walk at different walking speed, different users will, will even the same user might take different time. So we can never come up with a singular value that what, how objects are separated in this space. So let's say that uh, our variable here in this question is that time taken is TAB. Currently it is 7 seconds, but for different error users there will be an error. So we are trying to bound that error, that what would, be, what would that be? So we are saying that it's 7 seconds plus minus some error. Similarly, we can talk about any other pair of objects. Let's say we talk about A and C. We can come up with something 15 plus minus some error. We do that this for, for one volunteer. As more, more and more users start using it, we gather this data on, on cloud. And we come up and we come up with a simple optimization. What we want to do is that we want to minimize error across all the samples we have gathered, such that these constraints hold what we have already seen. We solve for these constraints and it gives us two things. One is that it gives a typical separation between any two tags. In our, it also gives that how confident we are about, about the separation between them. Now let's look at that. Our goal is from this entire exercise is to reduce the matching database size. So let's look at how can it help us for that. The user again enters into the museum and the uh, user has just seen A. Now user is walking on this trajectory. And we do not know whether the user will see B, C, or, or E and A, or so forth. But we want to say that at this uh, instant of time, what should 
we users database so here let's say time at a was t a and time currently is t current if we look at this circle this is telling us that where user might be if we look, just look at the distances in terms of time and the distance is t current minus t a here from the past uh, from those linear optimizations we know that that how confident we are between the uh, the estimate between the any two pair of tags so here if we want to ask the question that should b be shortlisted in the database given that i have spent so much time after seeing a to answer this question what we can do is that we can look at that how much time you have spent since you saw, last saw a plus added error if that time spent is more than what we typically see between a and b then this this tag can be shortlisted now if we look at any other tag let's say we look at d it is still far so therefore this will not be shortlisted so this gives us one way of shortlisting our image database depending on how much time you have spent from the last uh, visible annotation another way of looking at this same problem is in the rotational space now that your user is walking on this trajectory and let's say these are the points where user is making significant rotations let's say user saw something at a now if you put some values here let's say user's current rotation is 20 degrees are uh, you seeing a uh, after seeing a at b user makes next 20 degree rotation so the, uh, what we are what we are talking about here is is a, rot a, a relative change in the in the rotation so let's say a rotation at a was 0 and net rotation uh, captured by gyroscope is 20 degree at b then we can say that a and b are related by 20 degrees similarly we can come up with several relationship between c and b and and so on and so forth and we came up with another optimization here that what we are doing is that rotation at b minus rotation at a is right now 20 degrees but it is it is not true for all the users therefore there is an error and we want to solve it uh, for that and how do we use this rotation relationship to eventually reduce our stress database is like this let's say that the user was at a and now user is again walking on this trajectory with respect to uh, and, and at this current move, uh, time with respect to a the rotation of other tags would be the rotation of a itself will be zero rotation of at a will be rd minus ra and so on and so forth and this we can get from what from what we have seen in past if we want to know the current rotation of user with respect to a we can that we can get that also by saying that is r current equals to how much was the rotation at a plus how much gyroscope is telling us right now so right now we know all the rotations with respect to uh, a at this point if you look at this small picture if you want to ask the question whether b should be shortlisted for the for the matching or not that we can uh, find out by looking at that what is the rotation at b is rb and what is the rotation at current rotation is r current therefore rb minus r current is telling us that how much is the rotational distance and plus we can add the error term that how confident we are about this estimate and now this this uh, simple rotational distance is giving us that how how things are separated in the radial coordinates now and we can sort entire uh, database according to this number so we did this also and this gives us another way of shortlisting our database so first we do uh, uh, for shortlisting by uh, time and then we do shortlisting by rotation so over and there are many other components which we are not, which i am not discussing today Uh, on the client side, if you look at that, I'm telling us that that uh, we we are offloading the entire computation to cloud. So therefore, we need to do some optimization, such as the blur detection, uh, what would be uh, frame drift diff diff detection, uh, whether user is uh, moving too fast. These kind of optimizations are done on the phone side. Uh, on the client, on the on the server side, we have two kind of optimizations. One of them is a visual geometry, another is a sensor geometry. I have not talked about visual geometry. Please look at the paper. Uh, it contains more details. On the sensory geometry side, uh, we are doing this space and time optimizations. And and what happens is that that at any current moment of the time, the input to the system is what is current time and what is the current orientation. And that input actually shortlists a database for us. So we are not matching against the entire database. We are matching with only with the subset of the database. And the uh, and other pipeline is very uh, very standard. That you do some feature extraction, you do the matching, you do some refinement, and eventually, if if your match is correct, it pops up on the screen. And in this talk, I just covered this uh, section of the uh, uh, architecture. So we, we uh, developed uh, overlay on Android applications uh, as an Android app. It, it runs on Samsung Galaxy S4 phone. 
for, for the cloud, we have uh, a desktop computer in our lab. It is, it is a 12 core computer. Uh, we, have, we, we are doing most of the computation on GPU. Uh, it's a 6 gig NVIDIA GPU card. We did evaluation across 11 volunteers, close to 100 tags per, uh, uh, close to 100 objects were tagged, and total of 40 to 100 frames were uploaded. And now we are going to uh, evaluate our system across various system regimes. So first uh, uh, and foremost, we will, we will look at the fastest way computer vision can achieve this. So we are saying that scheme is an approximate scheme. It's basically, it tries to structure our database in such a way that we can do quick lookups. And KG tree kind of approach is, 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 is one way of doing that. Another way is, is a conservative way of doing uh, matching. Conservative way, way of doing matching is a brute force way of doing matching. And it's slow, but it is very accurate. And then we have overlay, which is built on top of a conservative system because we wanted to achieve high uh, accuracy, but it includes all the optimizations uh, I, have, I have talked about. So first thing first, uh, we are saying that uh, overlay performs faster than, than what we have seen in the past. Um, so if you look at, uh, it's not very clear, but uh, the, the left side uh, CDF is for the approximate scheme and the black, dark black is for conservative. So approximate schemes, uh, this does not include network latency. So approximate schemes takes close to 200 milliseconds to do one lookup on in a, in a 100 image database. A conservative scheme takes close to 750 to, uh, so 650 to 700 milliseconds to do that. And then there is overlay. Overlay beats uh, quick, quick width from computer vision by, by a very small amount. And, but it is built on a conservative way. And therefore, it beats it by fourfold. But this is just the half side of the story that, that we are saying that we are almost equal to quickest form of computer vision. But can we do better in accuracy also? So let's look at the precision number. So here I'm showing you that the conservative system gives in a median case close to 50, uh, close to 70 percent precision, and and uh, conservative, uh, conservative way gives close to 95 percent precision. Now, a point to note here is the precision number is defined as that how many times. A result was popped up on the screen and how many times that result was correct. Now we can design a system to achieve 100% precision easily by being very defensive about what we are answering. And it's possible that you can look around the objects and you do not pop up anything and you just pop up once in blue moon. So, so precision number is, is just one indicator. In, in case of overlay, we are achieving uh, very similar to what brute what, uh, force we can give us. But our, we are slightly worse than that because uh, we are doing these optimizations. They can go uh, slightly wrong, and it, it's possible that the, uh, the correct result is not even shortlisted in the database. But more important number is the recall number. So what recall number is telling us is that how many times a user looked at the object and how many times correct result was popped up. So in case you are defensive, very defensive about what you answer, that will be captured by, by, by recall value. So in recall value, this is where the approximate system does not perform that well. It responds only 30% of the time. A conservative system responds close to 70% of the time, and overlay is somewhere in between. Overlay uh, achieves uh, a recall of close to uh, 50%, which is slightly, uh, which is, which is uh, some sits in, uh, close in between the two. In the paper, we have discussed more about this, that how can we improve our recall, and th there, is a, there is a section which talks about learning. So on the conclusion side, um, I started my talk saying that there are two ways people have attempted mobile augmented reality. There is an image processing way of doing things and there is a mobile sensing way of doing And there is some work on, on, on the fusion of the two. What we are bringing here is, is that how can we build this, this geometric layout and how can we enable mobile augmented reality without using a node localization. And put together on the cloud, if we, put, if we do the cloud offloading, if we do GPU uh, optimization and all sorts of engineering, then we can enable uh, uh, overlay, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a practical way of doing augmented reality. In future, we are also looking to deploy uh, overlay system at UIUC. Um, it's a, it, be, it will be deployed in the distributed museum settings. And uh, thank you. Uh, I'm happy to question, take questions.